Hey everyone, it's the Koopa Man. Last week we talked about the topic of deconstruction as a tool and trope in media storytelling these days. In that video, I said without reconstruction, deconstruction is only ever destruction. Well, this time we're going to elaborate on what reconstruction is and why it's such a crucial step in deconstruction. To start with, let's do a quick refresher on deconstruction. To deconstruct a trope, a genre, a story, a character archetype, or any other literary tool is to break it down to its most basic pieces as a means of examining and critiquing it. It is frequently used by postmodernist writers as a means of getting back at their fathers for not buying them that pony, I mean as a means of critiquing certain tropes and stories that are crucial to the Western identity. Commies. In the deconstruction video, I outlined deconstruction being done one of two ways, using the analogy of taking apart a wristwatch. You can either smash it with a hammer and destroy it, then claim it was never good to begin with, or you can carefully take it apart and learn what each piece does and why it's so crucial. Most deconstructive writers do the former rather than the latter, and it creates the problems we see today as it's not only poor form, but it makes for really shitty stories that drip of ego and spite. Now with poorly done deconstruction, which is sadly most most of it, you don't have much left to work with. With really well done deconstruction, however, you have all the parts of your story intact. That's where reconstruction comes in. Once you dissect or disassemble your story, trope, genre, or what have you, that's when your job as a writer truly begins. Because like the proverbial wristwatch, if you don't reassemble it or have no plans to, then why did you take it apart other than to have a bunch of useless gears and sprockets making a mess on your desk? To quote Kurt Busiek, the writer of Astro City, It strikes me as the only reason to take apart a pocket watch or a car engine, aside from simply the delight of disassembly, is to find out how it works. To understand it, you can put it back together again better than before, or build a new one that goes beyond what the old one could do. We've been taking apart the superhero for 10 years or more, it's time we put it back together and wind it up, Time to take it out on the road and floor it, see what it'll do. In comes reconstruction, where you use the knowledge you learned deconstructing to rebuild what you once took apart. Some works even do deconstruction and reconstruction within the same story. One of my favorite examples of this is the Disney Pixar movie The Incredibles. In its first half, it deconstructs the superhero. Heck, its prologue scene ends up doing just that. Thanks to several instances of collateral damage caused during the heroics of Mr. Incredible, the government puts its superheroes into a witness protection program under the condition that they quit their heroics. But by the final act when a supervillain, one who had been actively hunting the hidden supers, mind you, appears and nearly destroys the city, it's shown that the heroes still have their purpose when the titular family rises up to save the day. And then the sequel came in, added nothing, felt like a completely unnecessary piece of filler that was tantamount to a wet fart. The Incredibles isn't the only work to reconstruct the superhero genre, mind you. There's also the Jeff Johns DC story event, Doomsday Clock, which itself serves as the ultimate answer to the Alan Moore story, Watchmen. While Watchmen is a good story, Alan Moore deconstructed the superhero with malicious intent. Even if the story ended up being really good, it was only really good by complete accident. Moore is a bit of an idiot savant in that sense. Emphasis on idiot. The story, at several points, goes out of its way to deconstruct the plot and story of Watchmen, including this brilliant scene where Lex Luthor tails off Ozymandias to his face. Throughout the work, Johns takes apart Watchmen while rebuilding the DC universe it was made to deconstruct, to the point the story ends with Superman proving himself to be a symbol of truth, justice, and hope, and reigniting all of those things in Dr. Manhattan, a character who was made to be a godlike nihilist. Johns did this not because he hated Watchmen, mind you. It was done with the most respect that any sequel or tie-in to Watchmen has ever been made with. He did this because he hated what Watchmen did to the medium. When Watchmen was successful as deconstruction, everyone tried to copy it. Granted, Moore was trying to copy Frank Miller, but that's a whole different story. The end result was a bunch of idiots running around with lit matches trying to burn down the whole genre. As I said before, The Dark Knight Returns and its consequences have been a disaster for superhero kind. A final example of this in comics and superheroes is the Superman storyline, What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, which was adapted into the animated movie, Superman vs. the Elite. In it, Joe Kelly writes a story where Superman has to come face to face with nihilistic anti-heroes, known as the Elite, based on the Authority and other such anti-hero groups from the British invasion of comics. Superman questions if the way he's doing things is truly working, or if he's becoming some sort of relic that's really only good to sell used cars and cartoons. It comes to a head when the titular Elite decide to start murdering leaders of two different countries that were about to go to war, causing a massive crisis that Superman needs to address. It should be known 
called it in the comic it was aliens instead of Eastern Europeans, but the point still stands. Superman finally puts his foot down and confronts the group, only to seemingly lose and then snap, in which he begins murdering them one by one until he's just left with their leader, Manchester Black. Manchester had been streaming the whole thing live to the entire world because he's a bit of a narcissist and he thinks he's finally proven his point. Only for Superman to reveal he faked the whole thing and he was in control all along. Superman used Manchester's ego against him to show the world that was slowly beginning to fall into his mindset, the end result of allowing superheroes to become unchecked killers and not holding them to moral standards. They were afraid of this terrifying image of a killer Superman, and thankfully that image will never come to be, if you ignore the Justice Lords, and Injustice, and the Crime Syndicate universe. While reconstruction is frequently used in the superhero genre as deconstruction requiring reconstruction is common in the medium, it isn't exclusive to it. During the 80s and 90s, the idea of a disaster on an airplane movie was not taken seriously anymore and usually reserved for the plot of B-rank movies like Snakes on a Plane or Con Air. This was primarily because of, well, not a deconstruction but a spoof of the genre, the comedy classic Airplane. However, in the mid-2000s, we got United 93, which was not only an airplane disaster movie, but one based on a true story that hit close to home at the time. The September 11th hijacked flight that crashed in Pennsylvania that was believed to have been headed for either the Capitol building or the White House. With that premise, people took this movie very seriously. Then there was Saving Private Ryan. Spielberg got a lot of flack from his contemporaries for this movie. In the Vietnam to post-Vietnam era, the marching orders to Hollywood from the Kremlin were to betray war as evil at all times regardless of context. This was to keep the American people as anti-war as possible so communism can spread unchecked. Then Spielberg came along and made a gritty yet very pro-America and pro-America's involvement in the war movie, Saving Private Ryan, which opened on a scene during Operation Overlord, the D-Day landings. This was a far cry from the usual depictions of soldiers as being sociopathic baby killers. It also helped that the USSR was part of this war, so it'd be silly for them to say the Allies were evil baby killers when they were part of the Allies, but you get the idea. Even Star Wars was an optimistic and upbeat pulp-inspired movie in the 70s, inspired from the Flash Gordon serials of old, in an era where the biggest movies were First Blood, Taxi Driver, and the like. 70s movies had a very cynical bent to them, so when the George Lucas instant classic came to the silver screen, it stood out being a case of being the right thing at the right time, reconstructing America's love of the cinema and how it can be a high-flying adventure rather than a bleak, cynical distraction. You even see this in video games. Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal rebuilt the one-man army that Doom Guy was when you saw him in the first three Doom games, before Doom 3 unbuilt him to make the series into more of a sort of survival horror, and sort of failed at it, which is the entire purpose of the BFG edition. Warhammer 40k Space Marine reconstructed the ideas behind the Ultramarine chapter and the arcs. The former had recently, under new writers, become a bit Gary Stewish. The game showed that they were anything but invincible warriors that could handle everything and anything. The latter, the orcs, devolved into comic relief. So the game had them be one of the primary threats, showing just how dangerous the screaming green log machines are up close and personal. <laughs> As I stated in my last video, without reconstruction, all deconstruction ever is is destruction. But you cannot reconstruct a work, a story, a genre, without first deconstructing it. In carefully doing so, you gain knowledge, which is shared with the audience, why that thing is the way that it is and why it's so important. Again, the parable of Chesterton's fence comes to mind. Deconstruction has been frequently used as a tool of subversion and destruction by people with malicious intent in order to tear down what they see as unnecessary or in their way. In actual it has a purpose in educating people on why things are the way that they are. Reconstruction shows the application of that knowledge put to good use while also giving us an appreciation for what's being reconstructed. It's like the old song goes, you don't know what you got till it's gone, and now that it's reconstructed, you can appreciate it better. In fact, if it's any consolation, the concept of postmodernism, which itself is a deconstructive philosophy, has met its own reconstructive movement in the form of remodernism. To quote TV tropes, Remodernism is essentially a reconstruction of what postmodernism challenged. The authors of the Remodernist Manifesto call postmodernism brainless destruction of convention and argue for a new spirituality in art as opposed to the nature of postmodernism, which they describe as nihilistic. Emotional damage!
Hopefully in time we are able to get writers and storytellers who are a bit more wise than our current generation of far left rabble who only seek to tear down and destroy. That way we can truly appreciate the beauty of storytelling the way it's meant to be enjoyed. With the knowledge that everything has a reason and a purpose. Anyway, that's all for this topic. This has been the Koopa Man. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like and subscribe as it helps me with the algorithm. If you have other works of reconstructed tropes or genres, feel free to discuss them in the comments as those two help me get recognized by YouTube. And until next time, game on.